Yeah, my history, Ghislaine, as a, as a, my, my background as a historian of artisans, small enterprise, shopkeepers, has been very relevant, not least in being able to say over and over again that the Industrial Revolution was rooted in the innovations made by artisans, um, which is so frequently overlooked, and yet actually most of the drive for innovation in human economic history has come out of the artisanal production sector. Um, well, what I want to do now in, 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 in the time I've, I've, I've got is actually um, reflect a little bit on the, on the um, uh, positioning um, makeshift in my own thinking, but particularly in Crafts Council's thinking, some reflections and thoughts that for me came out of my encounter with the, with the activities uh, and the discussions, uh, and then obviously um, offer some thanks to, to, to those who've been made all this possible. Um, Makeshift 2014, which I think probably a good number of you were at, was held at Ravensbourne, a specialist higher education institution for the creative industries in, in South East London. Makeshift 2016 is here in a major science and industry museum. And the crossover between the two spheres and what they do is so absolutely clear. Um, I don't want to make too much of the symbolism of the two venues, but nonetheless, the makeshift agenda represents the space where those two meet where creativity, education, research, science, and industry meet. That's what the makeshift agenda is about. It, it creates bridges between the worlds represented by Ravensbourne and by the Museum um, of Science and Industry. And as Heidegger once wrote, bridges don't just join, join two places, they reposition both of them. Um, and that sure is what we've done in this conference. We've repositioned um, all those different elements so that they look different. Now, the capacity of creativity through the arts to challenge linear thinking, I think, is one of its most fund fundamental um, benefits. Uh, as some of you will know, earlier this year, I published a, a, a big report um, on the understanding the value of arts and culture. And two themes in that report, and which you can find on the AHRC website if, if you're interested, two themes raised there of particular resonance, I think, to, to us at, at, at this conference. The first is what happens when arts and science work together. Um, the challenge, the disruption, the new ways of thinking in both directions that comes about um, when arts and science move, um, work together, when artists and makers work with, with scientists. Innovation and it's been a continual theme of, 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 of this conference, innovation emerges when difference comes together, comes together um, with the friction that Annie was talking about uh, and creates potential. The second um, um, point made in that report, which is relevant to us, I think, is the impact of creative businesses across the wider economy. There are spillover effects through the supply chain um, emerging from a whole variety of studies uh, across Europe, including in this country, um, firms that work with and obtain supplies from creative industry businesses, whether that's goods or services, are more innovative, have higher levels of innovation, um, even though they're not in the creative industries themselves at all. And that's really important because it comes back to a theme of the conference that innovation becomes infectious. That doesn't mean it's merely serendipitous. Indeed, as our innovation report argued, we wanted to get beyond serendipity without losing the serendipity to get beyond it and create the frameworks in which those kinds of, of innovative interactions uh, can take place. Um, and it was something that Annie talked about at the very start of the conference. Well, we've each taken our own path through this uh, event and our own intellectual and practical journey uh, through it. And we'll be leaving with our own lessons and thoughts and insights and practical lessons and a desire to go away and make and, 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 and so on. Um, I know that the most important lessons often come um, as one travels home or in the days after as you start reflecting on what went on. Um, I've not got the luxury of, of doing that. Um, I just want to offer some thoughts that have occurred to me through the conference as it, as it draws to a close, um, though I know I'm going to keep thinking about what's happened. We've, um, we've taken the same imperatives as we took in Makeshift 2014. What happens when craft and making engage with science, industry, business? What happens and, and what goes on there? Um, not simply to share um, as they do with each other, but rather to create something new that neither had uh, before. And that's something that, something that couldn't have happened uh, without each of them, um, industry, business, science, whatever, being, cha uh, being changed, artists and, and makers being changed by the disruption and the energy that arises from within the collaboration. And we've taken those imperatives, the imperatives that drive our makeshift uh, agenda, and applied them in a new, more socially driven uh, areas uh, at this conference. Social innovation, environmental sustainability, health, 
uh, and, and well-being. Um, we've, put, we've, we've, we've put them in areas where social justice becomes a very powerful imperative and driver. We've opened up thinking, I think, during the conference on a, a set of familiar concepts. Um, above, all, um, above all, when we focus not on craft, but on social challenge. And I think that's what we've done very well in this conference. We've started over and over again with social challenges uh, rather than with craft. And that's very important because we can then show the distinctive approaches that craft brings uh, and what the benefit of that is. Um, experimentation and innovation don't themselves require new techniques. That's one thing I've taken from this conference. Um, it may have new techniques, may even have new materials, but let's detach innovation from technology and from new forms of practice. Experimentation and, in, and the ensuing innovation can actually come from existing techniques used differently in practice or in ideas or in new social settings. And that's really important for us, I think, because if we're not going to have craft sucked into the current assumption that innovation means technology, we have to liberate ourselves from that, from that link. Indeed, so much of the conference has been about taming technology, making it a tool not a driver. And I think that's an advance we've made since 2014. Um, anything other than that um, would have lost, of course, what creative input can make. And that connects with the discipline of craft. Makers have disciplines. Ceramics, glass, weaving, metalworking, and, and so on. And they're often rooted in their disciplines. But as we showed in our Innovation Through Craft report, um, those disciplines are essential for the innovation, but if makers start from the discipline, their real creativity comes from putting it to one side and experimenting. And experimentation means innovation that often comes out of failure um, and comes out of the unexpected. Uh, as Leonard Cohen, who sadly died yesterday, reminded us, forget your perfect offering. And that's a good thing for us to keep remembering. Forget your perfect offering. Um, now, putting the discipline to one side requires confidence. Confidence from knowing that skills, from, from, from the knowing that skills, knowledge of material, the history of the craft is all there, and you can return to it as you need to, but you put it aside and experiment. And these, that points to another fundamental reflection, I think, and it's one that, 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 that Annie um, uh, raised just now. Um, it's one I would make as a historian, but it's important to craft and what craft is. New technology, new ways of working, uh, new ways of collaborating drive us forward. It's one dimension of what has made this conference so uh, exciting. But all this newness only makes sense if it's placed in the context of the past. Because if we don't look back and understand that past, what brought us here will never move forward. And it isn't about putting traditions of craft and making aside in the pursuit of the new. Rather, it's building on understanding and materials and knowledge of the past, skill as we come to see it at this conference in a much more subtle way, I think, than we've often discussed it in the past. Maybe care or love, as Mark Miodovnik um, um, inserted into the concept of skill uh, at the start. We need to build on all of that to create new possibilities, to create innovation that goes way beyond the product, um, innovation that can be unleashed by craft when it engages with other disciplines, um, other challenges, other questions. And I think we've shown that so much um, yesterday and today um, though I must say, I, off, I, I felt throughout it that we're at the start of a long journey. Um, there are a lot of those questions still need addressing. Um, we've given ourselves a better grip on materials. Uh, yes, we've heard a lot about uh, the exciting uses of materials. Um, even in the exceptional Maker's Breakfast presentation this morning, and those six presentations were incredible, I thought, it was the potential of materials, um, wherever, wherever they were from, new or not, that dominated, released by technology, not led by technology. And I was really struck by that in, the, in, the, in, in, in those presentations this morning. This year, say what I've said before, technology was tamed in our vision. It was made our servant, a very creative and collaborative servant, but nonetheless not what actually drove us. Instead, we brought to prominence um, the frames in which material is used and experienced. And I won't forget Shelley James telling us um, was it only yesterday afternoon, um, how science students uh, used the heat of a candle to adapt a pipette and simply to make it slightly different. And by doing that, they were personally released from the domination of scientific instrumentation. They gave them, it gave them back control. We've also got a broader grip on making. 
um, not only making things, but the fact that we're making new ways of working and new, new forms of collaborating um, as new ways to sustainability and, and to well-being. Making things was often sec secondary in what we've been talking about, which leads me to um, the danger of a transactional model that often shakes discussion um, in all sorts of sectors, but particularly creative sectors, that ideas and skills lead to change. That if you do X, you get product outcome Y. When all the interesting activity and all the interesting change goes on in the space between X and outcome Y. And that came up again and again yesterday and, to, and today for me. Um, it, it was in, even true in the astonishingly successful innovation through collaboration space that, that, that you referred to, Annie, where people were infused about actually making. Ideas flowed, people worked together. It was the process that got people so excited of working, to, of working together. What goes on between X and Y? And that all threw down the real challenge um, to what we mean by innovation. Yes, we heard much about innovative uses of material, technology, products, and so on. But a recurrent theme, theme yesterday and today, um, certainly in the main hall, um, was, that, was other forms of innovation. The innovation that comes out of the potential of craft thinking, practice, and relationships. Innovation, I'll say it for the last time, is what goes on between X and Y. It isn't what is the outcome um, of X producing on Y. So we talked a lot about social innovation, um, which drove us to recognize that there's been too much talk of the, uh, that too much talk of the potential of craft has not actually addressed the challenge of other innovations that were needed to make the potential of craft real, especially real on the scale that is needed. If we're talking about sustainability, if we're talking about social justice, very small, limited, exciting um, changes are not going to constitute the level of change that we need. And so we need other innovations. We need innovations in business models, in forms of collaboration and enterprise, in monetizing, contracting, in the scalability of output, which doesn't mean the scalability of production unit. All of that is the areas of innovation we've reflected on quite a lot, and they've actually been, I think, in some ways, the more challenging issues um, that we need to address. That's really important. Innovation is not just rhetoric. It's about real meaningful change. And that means far more than making, and that's the challenge. I think we've seen how the culture surrounding craft and making can powerfully help shape the answers. But as I said before, we're at the start of a journey in which we find how craft and making can really help shape those answers. Um, the Crafts Council sees this innovation agenda as, as one of its core activities. Um, and I, we've been enormously pleased, pleased by the enthusiastic response at the first makeshift conference two years ago um, to the Parallel Practices Program we've been organizing, which you've heard about, I think, bringing together makers, medical practitioners, researchers uh, at King's, to our Innovation Through Craft Research Report, which you've all received um, a copy of, um, and now to this makeshift conference. We're keen to maintain innovation through craft as a major theme of our work in, in the years to come, alongside all our diverse activities. We will, of course, gather again for makeshift 2018 uh, in a place yet to be decided. I think yet to be decided. Yes, yet to be decided. Um, between now and then, we'll be building the agenda for makeshift 2018. We've also had two very successful cohorts of parallel practices. Um, not quite finished yet. We want to maintain that, maintain that as a strand of our work, um, to tw take the parallel practices model and to develop it in new areas, perhaps healthcare, sustainability, engineering, and so on. And we're also planning a series of salons or round tables, exploring the ideas that have arisen um, in this conference to build our activities and thinking um, for the years to come. Um, we're, we really need your input to that. So let me repeat what Ghislaine and others have said, which is please feed in your own thinking about the things we might be doing and the ideas we might be exploring. We're still in the early stages of an innovation program that we believe has huge importance for us, but, but more importantly, for, for craft and for the wider world. It has a variety of objectives. We're doing it for a number of reasons. One of them is to show just how much potential craft practice has for innovation spillovers, way beyond craft, way beyond the art sector. We want to encourage and facilitate the collaborations that will make that happen. We want to show policymakers that craft is indispensable to innovation in so many spheres. And we want to identify the constraints that get in the way of that happening, which we have done in our Innovation Through Craft um, <coughs> report to some extent. But we can't wait for those problems to be resolved, because they won't. We have to take control of the agenda ourselves. We, not meaning the Crafts Council alone, but all of us in this room um, and beyond. Working with partners 
encouraging collaborations, building the evidence, shaping the understanding and the models and the narrative. That's what we want to do, um, uh, and it's what we want to play a part, on, part in from the Crafts Council. We're also ensuring that the innovation agenda links to our broader strategy of encouraging people, more people, um, to, engage, to engage with craft and see its potential. Um, Makeshift Do is that, the annual festival, which happened for the third time just a couple of weeks ago, um, to encourage maker spaces and fab labs and museums and libraries to throw open their doors um, to, 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 to the public and to new forms of wake, making. At the latest one, 27 venues offered 40 events, exciting activities for young people and others to see the way in which craft and technology um, could come together. Now, in all these dimensions of our innovation strategy, we need your help and your ideas. Um, the development of all the things I've been talking about, we'd love your input, and we certainly want your collaboration. Um, we're keen to make this an inclusive and collaborative programme for the future. But before that future, um, I must thank all of those um, who've made shape, uh, Makeshift 2016 such a success. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do any of this without the support of our main funder, Arts Council England, and our thanks go to them. Thanks also to our sponsors, uh, Digit2 Widgets for sponsoring the Maker Breakfast, um, and also um, for giving us a remarkable um, uh, insight into this theme of the taming of technology um, in, 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 in the presentation. Creative Europe for supporting the Kaunas Biennial panel, um, and G.F. Smith for supplying beautiful papers for programme uh, and, and, and workshops. Special thanks go to our creative partners, uh, the Kaunas Biennial team, to Stephanie Boydell and her team from Manchester Metropolitan University Special Collections, uh, Alice Kettle, Leslie Raven, and Kirstine Aubrey from Manchester School of Art at Manchester Metropolitan University for their enthusiastic development of, of, of the workshops. The curatorial staff here at the Museum of Science and Industry for giving us a unique opportunity to access their collections archive. And the Maker Assembly team for their help with the program. Um, and please note that the Maker Assembly is taking place tomorrow here in Manchester at the local Makerspace Mad Lab for those of you who can go. And many thanks to our space hosts. Um, to um, Grant Gibson and Ghislaine Boddington, um, to all the speakers, presenters, and panelists, to Annie, Annie Warburton, a very creative, creative de director, including her inspired idea to ask Manchester Camerata to give us a performance um, of, uh, of, of Mr. Babbage's coming to dinner yesterday evening, which was memorable. And thanks to the makeshift team. Um, especially Jane Saunders for her impeccable production, all the volunteers and all the Crafts Council staff who've worked uh, to make this event a reality. My final thanks have to go to Alma Daskalaki, um, our innovation manager at the Crafts Council. Without Alma's commitment, her ideas and her energy, this conference simply could not have happened. Thank you very much, Alma. And And, and finally, thanks to you all for your engagement, your collaboration, and your energy in these very special couple of days. You've lifted, we've together lifted our collective gloom after recent events. And that too, and that too made me think this morning of Leonard Cohen. Um, the next two lines after the one I quoted before, there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. We've been opening up that crack. Thank you, and see you again in two years' time.